Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. O Christ Jesus, who as a servant emptied yourself of glory and carried all our afflictions, teach us this obedience, that since in baptism we are united to your sufferings, so through sharing the burdens of the needy and standing as witnesses to your justice, we may be found in that eternal life which you have with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Get up, you lions, like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the fountain on the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the, the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sung together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy, can you lift up your voice to the clouds so that the flood of waters may cover you. Can you send forth lightning so that they may go and say to you, here we are. Who has put wisdom in the inward parts of, or given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water sinks, water skins of the heavens? When the dust runs into the mass and the clouds cling together, can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the lion, young lions when they crouch in the dens, in their dens, 
or lie in wait in their, in their con covert, who provides for the raven in, in its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food. The word of the Lord. Please pray the psalm responsively by half verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You wrap yourself with light as with a cloak. And spread out your like a curtain. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the winds your messengers. You have set the earth upon its foundations. You covered it with the deep as with the deep as with a mantle. At your rebuke they fled. They went up into the hills and down to the valleys beneath. He set the limits that they should not pass. O oh Lord, how manifold are you your works. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He's able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. <laughs> and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I've begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest <laughs> according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus has to periodically give some new lessons and old lessons to his apostles. And we see it in Mark's gospel perhaps more often than in the others. He has to continuously remind them of what it is that he's come to do. And one of the things that he keeps reminding them about one way or another is that the cross and suffering before the cross is going to be part of their lives. Now that's not a very attractive thing for them to hear. And like most of us, they might hear it but not really take it in. Because their minds are not there. Such as today, their minds are more on privilege and place than they are on what it means to become a servant, what it means to be last instead of first, and all of those things. So Jesus has to school them rather thoroughly about what it is that he's come to do and why it makes a difference and why the question of John and James uh, in one sense is irrelevant. Jesus tells them, you will drink from the cup that I drink from and you will receive the baptism that I receive. But whether you're going to be on my right or my left is, you know, has been reserved for others probably. You know, it's beyond me 
to know for whom it's been reserved. And again, it's because Jesus, in his whole life, is always about his self-emptying, about going out of himself, of risking ridicule and rejection by how he relates to various people, what he says and where he says it without respect of whomever is listening, but reminding them that this is not some kind of a, of a circus that he's running where you know, people should be chasing after him from place to place to see, is he going to multiply more bread today? Is he going to make some cripple walk or make a blind person see? Or is he going to do some other feat of, of greatness that will make us want to chase him around because of being the divine man? And he has to remind them periodically that those, not, those are not the kind of people he wants to be his disciples. Because they've got to understand that there is going to be loss, there's going to be challenge, and there's going to be possibly even the shedding of their own blood if they truly become his disciples. There's at least got to be a major transformation of how they look at life and the world and their place in it, if they're going to be his disciples. You know, in the letter to the Philippians from St. Paul, he talks a lot about our Lord being, even though he was in the form of God, he didn't deem equality with God as something to be held on to or grasped, but rather he emptied himself by taking on our human nature, our human form. And it was thus that he became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And Paul goes on to say, therefore, God has given him a name above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So once again, here he is trying to school the apostles in what it means to be his disciples. You want to be great? You got to be the least of all. You want to be in charge? You need to be the slave of all. You want to be great, you got to be less. All of those things that he spoke at that time would have blown the apostles' minds anyway because they were just like the rest of us, thinking that, well, if I want to be great, then I have to know who it is I have to associate with. I have to know what kind of politics I have to employ. I have to know who to make friends with, how to be socially upward and mobile if I want to be, you know, in charge, if I want to be the president, if I want to be the governor, even if I want to be mayor of Batavia, you know, who do I have to hang around with? Who's, what circles do I need to run in? It's no different from their time to ours. And so Jesus, in order to, again, drive home the fact that he is not the one who has come to be the kind of Messiah that they were hoping for, but a Messiah of a much different kind, he says these things to them when they ask, for a privileged place when he comes into his kingdom. You're not getting anything unless you're willing to drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am to receive. And they say, we are able. And then he says, yeah, well, okay. Then you will drink the cup and you will um, 
experience what I'm going to experience. But only the Father knows, really, of who's going to be on my right and on my left. And why don't you guys consider and con you know, concentrate on what's really important here, which is what he's saying to the other ten who are equally angry because James and John beat them to the punch. James and John went first, where the other ones were probably thinking exactly the same thing. I guess the reason this strikes me particularly is because right now we are in the throes of a presidential election. Some places have already started early voting, and some people are touting the fact that they voted already and how they voted and, you know, so, and all of that sort of thing. And as both candidates try to persuade us about why they're the better one, you never hear much about them wanting to, you know, occupy a lower place. I suppose if you're a candidate for president, you're not going to aim lower, then you'd aim higher. But what I mean is attitudinally, it's very difficult if you get elected to that position that you are ever going to feel like you are in some kind of servant role. Because everything that surrounds it speaks of power and authority and, uh, you know, of importance on the world stage and in the country and all of that. And that's where it stands in stark contrast to the way Jesus wants to run his kingdom. Where he says, you know, you've got to take the lowest place. You've got to be the slave of all. You have to be the servant of all if you want to reign. You know, you have to be willing to suffer. You have to be willing to drink the cup. You have to be willing to undergo that baptism if you really want to be like me. If you want to be like me, then you can reign with me. You can do the work that you're needed to do in this life. If, however, you think that that presidential level of things or some other exclusive office or having all kinds of resources at your disposal makes you somehow a better person than the person who doesn't have it, then you're wrong. And you're not suited for the kingdom of God. The apostles didn't get it until after Jesus is crucified and raised from the dead. And the Holy Spirit comes down on them. That's when they finally understand what Jesus was saying to them in this gospel and throughout the gospels. Because they were operating on strictly a human level, never grasping that Jesus was talking about a different way of life, a different vision for the world, a different way of being one to another a way of being servants of one another and not lords or ladies over one another. Now granted that there are times when we have to have pe people in positions of authority and in the family, you know, that there are, there are things that parents have to assume to do because the children are too young to know and they need to learn. And then in, in a community of faith, you know, whoever the ordained leader is has a responsibility both before the church in general and God to say certain things and lead certain things. And, you know, sometimes the temptation for us is to become a little more overbearing because we know better than you what it is that you need. 
Well, even if that were true, it still doesn't give us the right to make you feel less than. Because Jesus' words today are aimed at all of us. Whatever position in the church we have. Because we're all baptized. And as the, as the collect said today, that we're all members of Christ's body. And if because we are all members of Christ's body, we need to try to live as Christ lived and continues to want to live in his church through you and me who profess the faith and believe. So are we willing to be those who are, try to find ways to serve others? Or are we going to only think about what betters ourselves or our own immediate situation? Are we willing, for example, to try to share our faith even though somebody else might throw it back in our face? Are we willing to take the risk if sometime down the road for us to openly profess our faith will be punishable? Just think for a moment that most recently in England, they passed a law that even for praying silently in front of a clinic, an abortion clinic or someplace else, or even if you were there in front of a government building and you were silently praying for something, you could be arrested by the police, and if you would confess that that's what you were doing, you're guilty of a thought crime. If you don't believe me, you can look it up on YouTube and a lot of other places. And it could be here too. Because of these exclusion zones and everything else, or that, you know, what we end up saying on the internet or what we end up uh, sharing or watching or anything else could be construed in such a way by those with authority to bring us to a time of suffering, jail time, judgment by others, maybe a loss of our, our home, our resources, whatever. Not to not to pull a scare tactic, but this is just a reality. For us to try to respond to Jesus' call today and not fall into the trap of being solely concerned about what we have and how much power we have, then maybe one way that we can help effect the change is to take seriously the call to become true servants. Servants that Luke elsewhere, well, Luke in his gospel elsewhere, say, says, we are useless servants. We've only done our duty. As Jesus emptied himself, so we're called to empty ourselves, tempered always by the circumstances of our life, but nevertheless, the call remains, which means that we put him in the first place. And what is it that he calls us to do? That's basically what comes out in the letter to the uh, Hebrews today from Paul, talking about how Jesus went about emptying himself, how he became obedient, how through that obedience, he was able to suffer, how through that suffering he brings us life, and how when we suffer in union with him, we too come to life. And even poor old Job in the first lesson today, Job finally had to hear from God the kind of attitude he needed to develop, because God speaking to him very forcefully in those last four or five chapters of the book from 38 to 42. 
and telling Job that really his fretting and worrying and protesting his innocence, while there was nothing wrong with acknowledging his innocence, that he was just going way, way beyond where anybody needed to go because there was only one thing he really needed to remember, and that was that God called him first, that God loved him first, and that God's love was what he truly needed overall. And once he came to that acceptance and realization, things miraculously changed in Job's life. So we have something tough for us to deal with today. And I just invite you to consider what Jesus says in the gospel today about, you know, who are the great ones? Whoever wants to be great must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first must be the slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus serves us here today once again, not because we deserve it, but because of his love. Serves us his word, serves us his truth, his life, his forgiveness, his mercy, as he also gives us his body and blood. Let's now stand to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy One, we give thanks for all servant leaders of the church. Bless bishops, rectors, vicars, and deacons with humble wisdom and ground them in your love, especially Justin of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, Paula, our bishop, and Mike, our rector, the Anglican Church of Rwanda, their primates, bishops, people, and clergy, <clears throat> for the Diocese of Chicago, especially for all retired diocesan clergy, and for the surviving clergy spouses, and for the ministries in our companion diocese of Southeast Mexico, and Mother's Union of Diocese of South, sorry, of rank South Sudan. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Empowering one, fill the leaders of government with a spirit of service that prioritizes those on the margin due to job loss, underemployment, 
unsafe working conditions, and immigration status. May economic equity be achieved for all people, foster justice and peace, especially in Nicaragua, between Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Gaza, and in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Bangladesh, India, the Philippines, Vietnam, Somalia, Yemen, Myanmar, China, and North Korea. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Creative one, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats, food availability, and centers of refuge that all life may thrive. In places where famine and weather disasters have destroyed lives and drained people of hope, especially for the hurricane victims in Florida and the southeastern United States, and we pray for those who suffered loss, those who seek to relieve their distress, and all working in efforts to rescue, restoration, and recovery. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Restoring one. Send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with your healing. <clears throat> comfort the peace, comfort and peace with your healing, comfort, and peace. Those close to us, those on our intercessory prayer list, listed in the intention books or in today's bulletin, and those who, are no, those who have no one to pray for them. Assure them of your goodness and nev that never ends. Your grace that surrounds them on every side. We pray also for those who have voiceless, who have never known you, who are imprisoned by fear, and we witness to them your steadfast love and those we, men we mention now. The Powell family. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gracious one, we ask for supportive communities of faith where all are cherished, valued, and remembered, especially Jim Assey, Senior, Matthew Jusowski, Craig Keller, and Veronica Ricci celebrating a birthday. Are there others? Any wedding anniversaries? God of grace. Hear our prayer. Saving one, we pray for those who are born today, as well as those who are being welcomed home to your eternal kingdom. May your will be for, may your will for each of those, your love be fulfilled here on earth and in the life to come, especially Peter Oram. Howard Brooke, and for those whom we remember now. We give thanks for the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Cornelius, the Centurion, and all the saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in the promised place at the Feast of Victory that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace. And for Richard Powell, who died this morning, for his peace and rest. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, <clears throat> that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light 
within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace <clears throat> First of all, I was a couple minutes late because uh, I had to go to uh, an emergency this morning over on the east side on GC Road for a gentleman that died in his sleep. So that's, that's the Richard Powell I prayed for. Um, also, uh, let me make this announcement in the same, sort of in the same vein. Um, Peter Oram, the father of Krista Oram Keller, father-in-law of Craig Keller, uh, passed away uh, from a variety of, of illnesses this past week. I believe it might have been Thursday. I don't recall exactly. But uh, his um, memorial service will be announced. It's pending because they have to um, wait until relatives of his uh, can, can come in from Denmark. Um, he was very active still with his homeland, was there every year basically, and they would, you know, transact business because after all, he's, he was the founder of Midwest Ground Covers. So um, anyway, uh, Peter passed away, and so if you want to personally extend to Krista and uh, Craig your sympathy, I'm sure it will be uh, very well appreciated. And we'll announce when the, when the service will be. Uh, Peter himself belonged to St. James Episcopal Church in West Dundee, but the church is too small so that when the memorial service actually happens, it will be at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in St. Charles, since that's the place that's uh, large enough for this. So, um, just so that you're aware of that, the uh, altar flowers today are given to the glory of God by Pete and Laura Jizorski in celebration of their uh, second son, Matthew's uh, birthday. And uh, <clears throat> I want to thank everybody who participated last week and helped to uh, support by your participation the pulled pork dinner. Uh, if anybody came but missed out on the food, uh, we apologize for that. There were a lot more people who came than were anticipated. So. Uh, or at least those of us who did come 
eight more than was anticipated. So, uh, okay, uh, moving along. In a couple of weeks, we observe uh, All Saints, All Souls Day. And <clears throat> on All Souls Day itself, November the 2nd, which is a Saturday, uh, beginning at 8.30 in the morning, uh, there will be morning prayer, which will include the remembrance of all of those who are listed in our uh, death register from the time that I arrived as rector uh, until today. Uh, and also uh, will include those names that have been included by you uh, in the past. If you have names that you would like included, we would ask you to please call the office as soon as possible, uh, especially before this coming Friday the 25th, so we have time to prepare the lists uh, for all saints and all souls. Um, <clears throat> Next Saturday is Halloween, uh, our special marking of the celebration, and so we are going to have the haunted basement again. Uh, <clears throat> as well as, um, I'm sure there'll be some kind of refreshments and other things going on. But um, and it's in conjunction with Bat Fest um, that takes place downtown. Also, there will be trunk or treat, meaning that you know you can come in costume and go from car to car that should have you know treats. Uh, for the trick-or-treaters. So. so that's next Saturday. And then next Sunday, October 27th, is Wear Your Costume to Church Day. So some of us wear our costume all the time, <laughs> and so you can wear that. Um, or if you have a cos costume that you're wearing for a Halloween celebration, you're welcome to show up in that. I don't know how we're going to deal with that, but we will, <laughs> uh, however it is. Uh, so, and there are other issues in the bulletin that uh, I just would point out to you, uh, the stuff that's happening the rest of December, November and December um, is all there for your convenience. Um, if anyone still wishes to become an Episcopalian, please uh, notify me as soon as possible um, so that we can make arrangements for your preparation for the bishop's visit in February. Yes, Michelle. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Yes, yes, thank you. I had, wasn't on that topic yet. But on that topic, nothing is scheduled yet. No, nothing is scheduled yet. All we can say for sure is it'll be at the library when it happens. That's, yes. And this coming Thursday evening, uh, the monthly meeting of the women's group, Elizabeth's Hearth, takes place from 6.45 to 8.30. Uh, also, boy, <laughs> I just had it in my head here, and it, oh, well, at least this is here. Um, our scripture study on the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse, entitled Apocalypse Then, it was led by Ross, will meet again today at noon uh, to one o'clock, and that will continue then through next Sunday. And finally, what I remember now is that uh, today is the third Sunday of the month, so the open plate collection today is for the rector's discretionary fund. Anything else? Then the offertory prayer in your bulletins. 
Bring us, O gracious God, to praise you at your table with free and generous hearts, so that we may be set free from sin to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One thing I wanted to mention is that we unfortunately have run short of the little communion cups. There are some, consec some consecrated in the tabernacle, which I will also bring out. But if you normally receive one, and when I get to you that there aren't any, I'll offer you the option of receiving the host uh, itself. Um, and you can just bypass the chalice. But by next week, we should have our regular supply. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes. 
comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> Please kneel or be seated. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, <clears throat> presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Cornelius the Centurion, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. In union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, <coughs> and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my, it is Thine own, shall be a royal throne. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my intellect and use every power as Thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it Thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take myself and I will be ever only all for Thee. Pray after Holy Communion. Let us pray. We pray you, Lord, let our handling of heavenly things make us receptive to your presence, so that being blessed by you in this present age, we may be prepared for blessings of the age to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One more announcement. Um, in two weeks, that first Sunday of November, uh, is our annual chili cook-off. Um, we're a little behind in announcing that, but uh, if you're interested in offering up your own chili for judgment and uh, tasting, if you would uh, please contact the parish office and we'll get you in touch with Ginger Arndt or you can call Ginger directly if you have um, a directory, then let her know that you're interested in participating. That way I won't have to. Um, and uh, having been defeated so soundly last year in the competition, I don't want to, so. <laughs> so now, may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. <clears throat> Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway, if thou wilt be my guide. Oh, let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still, Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Oh, speak to reassure me, to hasten or control. Oh, speak and make me listen. Thou guardian of my soul. O oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art in glory, there shall thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.